Hey everybody, hope you're having a great Friday. You know, a couple weeks ago, Siemens sent over this ad here on the top of the site, you can see it right here, all about a virtual tour that they were doing. This is a virtual event they had online. And so as I was adding it, I was like, you know, why not put this in my calendar and check it out? So on Wednesday, when this event ran, I um, had it up and running and I ended up watching most of the most of it all day. I had blocked off the day to do that, but I had a bunch of other stuff I had to do too, you know, um, so, um, but I ended up watching. It was really good. And I figured, hey, I should probably create a video and kind of share, you know, what I saw that really stood out for me. And so let me, um, first, I'll take you over to that site here. This is what the site looks like. So I'll put a link in the description so you can get there. But uh, this is the factory automation virtual tour for 2022. And this is the agenda down here. And uh, the first part, you know, they had a kickoff with people live and whatnot down in uh, Georgia and um, at their main office. And um, they also had a chat running so you could chat at any time. Most people were just submitting questions. Um, not too many people. There was not a lot of back and forth going, uh, going on, but I did talk to some people about old AB drives and whatnot. But um, in any case, um, they started with the modernizing and integrating your automation and drives. Now, I thought this was going to be pretty much the same thing they said when they came on on my podcast. You know, I've had the, the PLC guys on, the network guys on, the IO guys on, motion guys on, I think was the most recent. And um, so I'm thinking, oh, this isn't going to be anything new. But as I started listening, I kind of got drawn away from my work into the screen here to watch the presentation. And um, I've pulled up some videos. Let's see if I can bring up... Um, the pictures that, of the, the key things I saw. So a lot of their focus was, and they even said this during the live stream, a lot of their focus was, um, you know, recognizing that, you know, Alan Bradley Rockwell is the predominant, you know, industry leader in this area. And so they were really talking about how Siemens works with uh, those protocols and devices, right? And so I grabbed this uh, slide. Sorry, Jim, I got you, and, you know, as you were saying something. But um, in the slide, you can see that... Um, they have all these I.O. products and they now have uh, what we would call in the Allen Bradley world an adapter. And what they would call is a field bus module or interface module. And they actually have these new ones out that talk three different protocols all at the same time, which is wicked cool, right? And I, in fact, I, I reached out to them to see if I can get one of these to try. But these can talk Profinet, right? So that's the Siemens Industrial Ethernet. Ethernet IP, which all the Rockwell folks are going to be familiar with, and Modbus TCP, which a lot of other people use as their default standard, and almost everybody can communicate Modbus TCP. It's kind of like that, that uh, you know, the lowest common denominator. I'm not not to offend anybody who likes Modbus TCP, but it's kind of like a baseline that almost everybody can do, right? So um, I thought that was wicked, wicked cool, and I thought their approach to this presentation was cool too, because they said, "Hey, I know a lot of you out there may be using." Uh, Alan Bradley, and uh, the cool thing with this is like you could standardize on one I.O. platform and use it with virtually anybody's controller, right? So uh, I thought that was really cool. You know, they have like the Slice I.O. Um, and they have, of course, the Block I.O. and whatnot. So that was the first thing I shared. I was actually sharing this stuff on LinkedIn Live. Um, feel free to connect. I'll, you know, I'll put my LinkedIn in the description too. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I only connect with people in our industry. I'm very, very clear when people send invites. I get a lot of invites from, you know, marketers and recruiters and all. That. I only connect to people in industrial automation. So um, that's what that account is for. So in any case, let's go to the next one here. Now, the next one, I hadn't even heard of this before, right? I guess I haven't had anybody from their VFD group on the podcast. But this was... Um, micro drives in slice IO format. So you see their ET200 SPIO format, right? That's kind of like their point IO or, you know, um, you know, like the Wago guys have. Everybody has this type of uh, slice IO. And, um, you know, uh, micro drives. I'm like, that is so cool because, um, you know, maybe not, you know, you're not going to fit a very, you know, a lot of power through a little thing like that, right? But still, I could think of a bunch of little stepper and servo applications that would be a lot of fun to use 
um, this width, right? Especially if you're in an educational type of situation or you're doing anything in the entertainment industry. I just thought that was really, really cool. So I wanted to share that as well. I just, um, now you can go back and watch this. I should, probably should have said this at the beginning. You can go back to that site and watch all of this stuff, right? It's all up there. It'll be up there, I think, through the end of June. So I'm just throwing out my highlights, but you may want to go back and watch the whole thing because there's a lot of stuff in there. But uh, very, very cool stuff. I thought that was cool. Um, the other thing they talked about, too, is this tag converter. You know, like everybody who has an HMI, they want to make it so it talks to all PLCs, right? You know, Rockwell did that with the PanelView Plus and the Kepware drivers, which I, I'm, I'm hearing they don't sell anymore, which is kind of weird. But um, in any case, uh, you know, everybody, all HMI companies do this, right? And it's cool, right? Why not? Why wouldn't you do that, right? You want your HMI used on as many products as possible. And so Siemens does this as well with their line. And they have, I thought this was a really interesting, they have a tag converter, right, that will convert your tags from uh, Rockwell and, right, and bring them right into their HMI software. So let's say you take your uh, RS Logic Studio 5000 program, save it as an L5K, they can suck that in. Now, I haven't used this yet, but it is completely free. And that QR code apparently brings you right to the free tech note. And uh, I do, thanks to uh, Siemens, they did send me some HMIs in, so I can't wait to try this. But um, yeah, I thought that was cool. You know what? Because um, especially with all the shortages and back orders, you know, if you need a, a really uh, beautiful uh, HMI and you want something that's multi-vendor capable, um, this is definitely something to think about. You know, if, if vendor A has it in stock and vendor B doesn't, then, um, you know, why not? And I love these new unified comfort panels. They're just so beautiful. But um, in any case, uh, so I thought that was cool, just throwing it out there to you. Um, then they started talking about putting their VFDs on Ethernet IP. And I really think they, they did it right here because what they give you is, you know, putting an AB drive on Ethernet IP is just super easy, right? You just right click in the IO tree, add it in, and boom, you're ready to go, right? Not much to do there. But third parties often struggle with giving you that same functionality. I know some people work really closely with Rockwell to get this, this stuff added into the, the catalog that comes with Studio 5000. But um, what Siemens has done is they not only give you an electronic data sheet. Now, this is an electronic data sheet. You don't have to worry about the firmware of the drive. So if you have a version 4 and you go to version 5, you don't have to change anything in Logix, right? So they give you an electronic data sheet. I think that part's cool. And then they give you an add-on instruction, and that's the best way to do it, right? An add-on instruction. Um, we took a look at that recently with the I.O. from IFM, and I, I do want to do more with that I.O. because they have some great A AOIs. And uh, shout-out to Rich, who actually gave me a tutorial on it last year. Um, he's also donated equipment to the to the, uh, to the the blog as well. So thank you, Rich. Um but uh, add-on instructions, that's the way to go, right? And then they also give you face plates for uh, the Panel V Plus. So, or Factory Talk View on me, right? So, um, very, very cool. And um, talk about making it easy for you, right? So, I, I, I sent out a message. I said, hey, can I, can I borrow a, a, a G120 or one of your drives? Hopefully something that runs off 120 because I don't have 230-volt uh, three-phase out here. But, um, um yeah, I'd love to get, um, actually, they sent me a, a, a demo that they had lying around for the course I'm filming. Um, yeah, the course is mostly done, but uh, I'm still filming it. And uh, so I could try that one as well if it supports it. But uh, in any case, I thought that was very cool. So um, they also talked, now I, this kind of blew me away because I'm like, why, why are they doing this? But then they started talking about the old Slick 500s and PLC5s. And how they could also replace the legacy drives, right? They kept saying the 1336, very, very old VFD, right? Extremely old. Anybody of you, any of you who have used the uh, the old 1336 mod, I think it was the G2, to put up the 436 classics onto remote I.O., that thing was painful, especially when it first came out. It was like the firmware was broken and it didn't, like, do things right. And uh, I remember setting it up in the early 90s and it was... Uh, one of the first, uh, that was actually the first drive I put on remote I.O. and I thought it was horrible. But eventually they, they, they fixed the firmware, but never liked it. Not anything like the 1203 GD1, which I always thought was a dream to set up with the data links and all that. Just uh, just awesome. I mean, you know, quarter rack or full rack, you know, or three quarters, half. It was, that was a great product. 
Well, apparently these guys have, um, Siemens has teamed up with Soft PLC to, to have a remote gateway already pre-programmed for their drives. So you can take um, an old Allen Bradley drive off. And if you can't get the new Allen Bradley drive, right? Or if Allen Bradley isn't making a drive that works on remote I.O., you can put one of the new Siemens drives on remote I.O. And I just thought that was super cool. Now, how easy is this to do? They made it sound like it was plug and play. Um, I don't know. Now, there were some people on a the call, they're like, well, how's it going to know what tags to use? And I'm like, look, remote I.O., there is no tags, right? It's all rack group slot. And if I remember correctly, right, if I remember correctly, all of the devices, you know, if you're doing block transfers, then, of course, that all gets uh, gets filtered through a single byte, right? But um, 95% of all the drives on remote I.O. were just di digital, right? So it was just, you know, you typically a full rack where you had the first word in and out where the bits, right? Command or status. And then you may have speed and all these other things, or, you know, um, ramps and all that as the rest of the words of that rack. But um, you could do block. Most of them did support block transfers where you could uh, a lot of times read in a bunch of parameters or write down a bunch of parameters. But... That was uncommon, but uh, so I, I would love to get this too to try this out to see is it really easy to do, right? Is it, or is it like this convoluted, complicated thing? I don't know. They made it sound easy, but uh, yeah, figured I'd throw it out there. And here's a bigger picture of it. I mean, it looks it looks pretty basic. You know, you got rack words zero, one, two, three, all the way up to seven, and um, you get to tie it into you know the commands and statuses coming back and forth. So I mean, it looks looks pretty pretty uh simple but uh, you know the you won't know until you try it right um and uh, this is just uh uh their device for they're working with hillshire here who i'd love to get on the podcast but uh, hillshire and uh they made a pro product for them to do device net um which I, I happen to be a big fan of device net but nobody nobody really liked it because it was so hot well most people just thought it was too difficult to use it Remote I.O. was just too difficult to use for most people as well. So uh, most casual users, you know. Um, so, um, but uh, yeah, device net. I, I got to do a device net cost. People keep asking me to do that, but, um, you know, there's only one of me. <laughs> it's like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, so the other thing, now they had a bunch of stuff on motion. They had a bunch of stuff on uh other other products and whatnot and um you know i'm I, my background sensors plc's hmi SCADA, mes that's kind of always been my focus but uh, when they got into edge computing it kind of my ears perked up because what they've done is they've done a great job now we, we've covered uh, mqtt devices like the uh, rta device behind me somewhere <laughs> that uh, we set up to go and grab data out of the controllers and put it up mqtt i think we use mosquito as our local server, but you know, you could go to Amazon or Azure or any of those cloud platforms, but, um, and a great product, right? I still leave it running. So, um, whenever I do, whenever I turn on the wall behind me and, um, but in any case, um, you know, these, what they did with these though, is they kind of benchmarked them all. So look, if you have, uh, you know, five PLCs each with 500 tags, you'll need this, you know, uh, edge device, edge computing device, like a, like a, you know, like a headless, you know, industrial DIN rail mount computer and so on. So I thought that was really cool because, you know, it lets you know which of their devices that you needed. You know, you don't need a, you may not need a full blown industrial PC, IPC. You may just need the, one of their little edge PCs that you can put right on a DIN rail. Um, the other thing I want to show you here is the apps. So their edge devices, they also have an edge app store, right? Where, you know, if you're an integrator or an OEM, you can create apps you can either make them uh, private or make them um, public and resell them. And so this is kind of just a slide that kind of goes through all the apps. I know MQTT is a big one. They have an Ethernet IP connector. They have a um, the Mitsubishi connector. They have the Simotion cinematics. Um, they have an S7 connector. They have the uh, AWS um, MQTT connector. They have one for Schneider. We just had Schneider on the show not too long ago. Um, they get some great stuff as well, but, um, they also have the apps like the flow connected, the live twin machine insight. You know, I, I don't even, I mean, this is just, there's so much here, right? But, uh, you know, if, if this seems like something you need to know more about, definitely want to contact these people and check this, check this presentation out on the edge. 
Um, let's see, do I have any more? What one was this? Nope, this was number nine. So those out of, you know, a whole day's worth of presentations. Let me go back to the site here. Um, you know, a whole day's schedule, right? They had all these, uh, and the Q&As. Oh, it looks like, uh, come on, wake up. So you can see the schedule here, and I'll put the link in the description. And um, if you want to check it out, they're supposed to be updated to the end of June. And, um, you know, I think uh, if any of that stuff looked interesting, again, there's so much more than what I covered. But uh, in any case, I just wanted to share that with you. And with that, that's the end of this episode. I want to wish you all a great weekend. I know I'm going to go camp and I can't wait to unplug for a while and uh, sit around the campfire. But with that said, I want to wish you all a very safe, happy and healthy weekend. And until next time, my friends, peace.